Hello, my name's Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learbird. It's a good question here today about police dogs that are aggressive or turn aggression towards the handler when they get hurt. I've been there a number of times in this type of situation. But before I get into it, I want to say that this question came to us through the Ask Cindy portal in the front of Learberg.com. And Cindy gets them every single day. She answers them every day. You don't need to be a customer of Learberg to ask a question on training, behavioral problems, medical problems, breeding problems. We have over 50 years, over 60 years for me, uh, of experience in training dogs. Most of our work is, is done with, with working dogs. For 10 years, I was a canine handler at our local sheriff's department. So let me talk about this because I'll read the, the question because it's an excellent question. I have a pretty well-trained Belgian Malinois police dog. He does explosive and detection work and tracking very well. He's also very obedient. He has no aggression towards dogs, territory, toys, people. But for some reason, when my dog has any sort of pain whatsoever, he becomes highly aggressive towards me. I've been reading and familiarizing myself with a lot of your training methods at Learberg since I left the canine handler school. But even in your literature or in the schools, I can't find anything that really is specific to this issue. I truly hope you can help me correct this problem because I feel my dog is absolutely a wonderful dog except in these situations. Thank you for everything that Learberg does for dogs and dog owners. So Cindy said that, and it's true, that this is more of a reflex action on the dog's part. Obviously, if the dog was going to get aggressive to this trainer, he would have shown it in obedience training when he got corrections for obedience training as long as they weren't painful. Uh, but the fact is, there's not a silver bullet that's going to fix this problem. One thing that's very, very, very important is on a dog like this, we probably would not have that dog wear a remote collar. I don't think you're going to use a remote collar to stop this type of aggression. Uh, and the same thing goes with wearing a prong collar. I don't think that this dog should be worked with a prong collar because it would be very easy to go from normal behavior to a stronger correction, too strong of a correction that the dog didn't understand. And that's a key point here. If the dog didn't understand why he's being corrected with a, with a prong or with a remote collar, he's going to turn and try and bite the handler. So don't even try and use those. That's not specifically gonna solve all of these problems because like Cindy talks about this here, that you know, we've had dogs like this and it's a, it's a deal where you have to manage it. You can't set up a scenario where you're gonna put your dog in a painful situation and then figure out how to deal with it. You just kind of have to be prepared for it. I would have this dog wear one of our dominant dog collars all the time. And whereas a prong collar and a, and a remote collar are gonna overstimulate a dog, a dominant dog collar takes the power out of a dog. And when it's fit right, so that it only has about an inch of slack and it's worn underneath the dog's jaw, slight upward pressure is gonna <laughs> it takes the fight out of a dog very, very quickly, especially if you're in the situation where it's kind of a very dangerous situation where the dog is trying to attack you. If I have to, I'm going to pick that dog's front feet off the ground so that he can't get at me. And that calms the dog down. It also teaches the dog that, hey, I better not screw with him. That's not the right way to do it because I'm going to lose that fight. And... Uh, 
I know that there are animal rights people out there that are gonna poo-poo this, but these are people that have never handled the type of dogs that I've handled my entire life. These are not people that can handle a very strong working police dog. So they can have their own opinions, their opinions happen to be dead wrong. And just because a dog does this, doesn't mean that it's not a good dog. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't, it's not an excellent, excellent police dog. Because it sounds like it is an excellent police dog. It just has this problem. And we don't know why this all happened. It could be genetic. It could be something that happened to the dog before the handler got him and took him through police training school. We don't know. But we do know that we have to learn how to manage the dog. And we have to learn how to manage it without getting bit ourselves. And in closing, I'll say that uh, one of my very best friends is Kevin Sheldo in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he's one of the top police canine instructors in the United States. He runs six-week training courses. He's a retired uh, police canine handler in the Sheriff's Department down in Albuquerque, and he's, he's run, at this point, he's run close to 65 six-week courses. Do the math on how much training. And he doesn't train civilians, he only trains police service dogs. So if you do have a question, Kevin is working on a, working with me right now on producing a course on detector dog training. And we have courses we've done with him and we have some courses planned with him. So if you have a question and you're a police canine handler, you have a question, send it to Ask Cindy. We'll ask Kevin, we'll, we'll go back and forth and get answers to your questions.